Take on board instructions to heart. You never know when it will be handy. Plus, the weather in the Just Plateau is one example of how depressurization works. There's more from our guests. When, when, you, when you travel to Jaws, which is higher, when you are running, you get tired. So because of lack of oxygen, because the higher you go, the oxygen level d drops. And the physiology of the body uh, becomes uh, reduced. So that means you get tired. So when you enter an airplane that is at 8,000 feet, that means it's simulating the condition. You are at 35 or whatever feet, you are at 30,000 feet but it's simulating the condition of 8,000 feet, that is the level of oxygen, nitrogen, whatever it is that is in the atmosphere at that level, is simulating that same factor at 8,000 feet. First of all, pilots are trained. The first uh, things that you are trained about is depressurization, because you have to understand, we are operating at uh, 35 or 40,000 feet. So if there is any depressurization problem, you must be aware of it and you must be trained to quickly react to it. Uh, in my careers of flying, yes, I've had maybe two or three depressurizations and uh, it was just a normal um, uh, emergency procedure that you follow, which you've been trained every six months, you are trained for it. Um, I don't think the passengers should have any, um, any fear because we always brief them in the event that we lose carbon pressure, this is what we're going to do. So this is the event that we have lost the carbon pressure. That's, that's just normal for me, that's, uh, that's absolutely normal. What will cause, what will have a problem is what caused the carbon pressure to be, to be lost. That's the only, this time. But if there is nothing, if, if let's say the outflow valve decides to open and then dumps all the pressure, it's not, a, it's not a problem. You start an emergency descent and you put your mask. The airplane will fly perfectly at 14,000 feet and nothing happens. So in my experience, I think uh, I was flying the Park 11. then we had a pressurization problem. And uh, of course we did what we were trained to do, done the oxygen mask. And the passengers, uh, of course, a bit frightened, but uh, they also done the oxygen mask. But I encourage passengers not to be frightened as far as the airplane is flying. They should just don the oxygen mask and, um, and operate normally until the airplane comes to a comfortable level of about 14,000 feet and they will be asked to remove the mask and then continue a normal flight. After all, the airplanes that we fly at 14,000 feet, we don't need an oxygen mask for it. No, I think the problem with most passengers and especially Nigerian passengers is they feel that flying is a myth. But there's science to it. And the, the, I keep saying that the safest way to travel is by air. And there are empirical figures for that. And they should be, they, we should understand the science behind flying. If you understand the science behind flying, and you do see the f flights, how they go, and you read about it, I don't think there's anything to be scared of. The aircraft, is not that it's magically flying. It has engines, two engines, like you have in the car. It, it sucks air and then produces thrust, and the air aerofoil creates lift, and it takes the airplane up in the air. And the, the, uh, the aerodynamics cause it to turn around and everything, and there is no mystique about it. It's just the science of flying, that's all it is.